Hey everyone, it's Dr. David here, physical therapist, and um, we're going to be talking about knee braces and bone-on-bone -bone knee arthritis today. Um, thank you for those of you that are joining us live. Uh, we're going to get into the knee braces discussion here in a second. I just want to encourage you to uh, type any questions you have in the chat. And um, if you can, just say hi in the chat as well. Let me know that you can hear me so that I can make sure all my equipment's working just fine. It looks like it's working on my end, but I want to be sure that you guys can hear me as well. You can also give us a thumbs up. If I see those, that tells me that I can hear you as well. That might be easier for you. And um, if you're catching this on the replay, welcome to our channel. We're focused on helping people stay healthy, active, and mobile while avoiding unnecessary surgery, injections, and medications. Let me just change my angle here a bit. And so what um, I want to talk to you guys about today, I got a comment from one of our subscribers, or I don't, I don't know if they're subscribed or not, I couldn't tell, um, but his name is Lawrence Gallian. And uh, he's got kind of a long um, uh, uh, comment here, and the question's buried in there. So I'm just going to read it all to you. It's in the description below if you want to catch it again. He says, if hypothetically you had a patient that presented with moderate gonarthrosis, decreased joint spaces with major involvement of the medial, misalignment of the femoral tibial eye, periarticular calcifications, retropatellar, retropatellar chondromalacia, prominent tibial spines, whew, would you recommend a knee brace or a knee sleeve or only exercise? And what type of knee brace or sleeve should the person buy if you recommend them? Many thanks to you for your help and wisdom. Happy holidays. Um, so he said a lot here, and, and I, I think that's what's probably going on in his knee, or maybe he's asking for a friend. Um, but all those things that he mentioned are signs of having knee arthritis or a bone-on-bone -bone knee arthritis situation. A gonarthrosis is a stuck joint. Um, a misalignment in the knee joint could be coming from that as well. Hey, fourth shoot. This is great. Thanks for, for chiming in. I, I'm glad I could hear you. Um, so... What he's dealing with is he's got a stiff knee, likely. He's got possibly some swelling. There's bony changes in there, losses of cartilage. Um, he didn't say flat out that he's got a bone-on-bone -bone knee joint, but depending on, on the x-ray, that might be the presentation. And people in this situation are typically looking for some sort of pain relief or way to cope with it so that they can continue to walk, continue to do their daily activities. And a knee brace is a very logical solution in this in this instance so here's my recommendation for you if you've got knee arthritis um loss of cartilage that's what he was talking about with the retropatellar chondromalacia and um and also gonarthrosis just means a, the the joint is is getting stuck stuck together arthrosis means it's it's fusing essentially um i would wear a knee sleeve not a full-on brace that has brackets and everything. I would wear just a simple knee sleeve. I've got a recommendation for one that I like that's from amazon.com in the description on this video below. Um, really, there isn't a hard and fast, like you need to get this sleeve or else you're not going to get the, the benefits. Um, you know, a lot of people ask questions about the copper sleeves as well. And uh, those are probably going to work as well. The, the thing with the copper, it is not um, healing you any faster or, or making you uh, feel better than another knee sleeve. The copper infusion within the fabric is simply for antimicrobial or antibacterial uh, effects. It's supposed to keep the knee sleeve smelling nicer than if you didn't have the copper in there. Uh, but as with any knee sleeve um, or brace, you got to wash that thing. You got to make sure that it stays clean. If you're going to be using it consistently, especially if you're more active, you need to be uh, taking good care of your knee sleeve. Now, why a sleeve over the brackets? Let's answer this question next. You only need a bracketed knee brace like this one. I've got one right here. It's the one that I put on, on the thumbnail for you. Um, now, these are the ones that we sell here in the clinic. We actually don't have any braces that don't have brackets because typically people coming in here to the clinic, are they need a brace like this. This is what we keep in, in stock here. Um, now, this would be one that you need if you've got a ligament problem, like you have a torn ACL, a torn MCL. Uh, we just had a client recently who purchased one. She has an MCL laxity, meaning it's not full on torn, but with testing that we did by hand, we could feel on her right knee compared to her left knee that her MCL just is looser 
than the than the other side. And so it's causing inner knee pain. MCL is the medial cruciate ligament, which is on the inside of the knee. So I recommended she buy a brace just like this one. This brand, um, I like this brand. It works out for me. I actually had a knee problem myself and I use this very knee brace. Um, it's called Shock Doctor. Um, and uh, we, we've linked in the description below. You can go get one if you like. Um, and it's got metal brackets in here. So um, I'm grabbing the bracket right here on, on this side of the knee brace. And there isn't like a right and a left. It's a one size fits most situation. This is, this is an XL, an extra large, um, but they do have um, medium, large. I think they go up to double or triple XL. Um, so you'll have to look at the sizing chart. And by the way, if you do get this knee brace, go a size up from whatever the sizing chart tells you. That's what I found to be pretty consistent. Um, but this knee brace with brackets is what you'll need if you have a ligament problem. For just a bone-on-bone -bone knee arthritis problem, one without brackets will do. Now, you won't go wrong getting a brace like this. If you feel more comfortable in a bracketed knee brace with the, with the metal um, inside, and I can't take this out. They used to make them to where you can remove the, the brace and the hinges. This is a double hinge one, by the way. So it's got two hinges right here. Those are the best, in my opinion. Um, this will, will support you as well. What you're looking for specifically in any knee brace, whether you get a bracketed knee brace or a non-bracketed knee brace, is the feel. It needs to be comfortable. It needs to be compressive. It needs to give you a lot of, of, of pressure, but not so much that it's cutting off circulation or that it's overly, uh, that it's uncomfortable, basically. And there's no such thing as a comfortable brace. Let me, let me clarify, because I just said, go find a comfortable brace. You're going to probably have to try two or three braces. You might go to the store to, to find the one that works best for you if you have that option. Or you might order two or three from the internet to see which ones work best. I've had the most success with this brand myself, um, like here in the clinic as a therapist, recommending this to our clients. Um, but we've had clients that have definitely told us, no, I didn't like your brace. And they went and found something else that they liked that still does the job. You could do that. And that should work just fine. At the end of the day, you just need that compression. That compression gives you some relief. And the science is kind of mixed on why. The best evidence that I've seen is that it's a placebo effect when it comes to knee arthritis and, and bone on bone situations. Um, now, if you have a ligament problem, it's a different situation. You literally need stability from the brackets and that makes people feel a ton better because their knees kind of wobbly and loose. When you have those metal brackets around your knee, then it prevents the knee from wobbling so much and it allows the ligament to heal. So it is necessary to get a bracketed knee brace if you have a ligament problem. But for just arthritis, you don't have any known ligament problems, go get yourself a, a knee sleeve without brackets. Or if you have one of these already, you prefer the, the one with the brackets, or maybe you have a bone on bone situation plus ligament issue, then you need the bracketed knee brace. That's a big, big deal. So um, I hope that answers your, your question, Lawrence, uh, on, on what to get. Um, let's. I have another um, piece that I, I wanted to tell you about. When it comes to cost of braces, because braces vary in cost tremendously, you can get a cheap brace and a more expensive brace. What I've seen when it comes to braces is uh, the more you spend, the better the materials. The materials last longer. Um, they tend to not stink so bad if you use it more often, but they, they, they might just breathe better is what it is. Um, so the, if for, a, for a situation like knee arthritis, especially a bone on bone one, you're probably going to be using this brace for a while. So that means get yourself a good one so that you're not tearing it or, or it, it'll last you longer. It'll survive more washes as well. This is not something you're going to put in a washing machine. You're going to have to wash this by hand. Um, and uh, you'll, I haven't looked at the, the washing instructions for this particular brace, but the one I used to have, you could take out the brackets um, and, and then wash the brace without the, the, the metal brackets, the hinges inside. Um, so uh, you choose accordingly for what you need. Now, if you're dealing with a ligament problem, you're probably going to need uh, the brace for less time. It just depends on the severity. So you might get away with buying a, a cheaper brace. Um, I like this one is probably going to run you in the $50 US uh, range, $50. Um, a, a lower, you could, you could get a lower end bracketed brace for probably like $30 or $40. Um, and then a sleeve will run you like 10 bucks on the low end, on the higher end, like 30 or $40, maybe even $50, depending on on the quality of the materials and other little things they have. Sometimes they have straps, sometimes they don't. So um, 
All right, I think that covers everything I needed to tell you about braces. By the way, I've, I, I went to the store shopping on one of my videos here on, on our YouTube channel, and I made a, a whole much longer video going into detail about why you need this brace and that brace. And I was showing the, the aisle at the store where you can um, purchase the, the knee braces. So go check that out. I put it in the description below and um, you can learn more about braces and for your specific condition in case it's a not a knee arthritis um, uh, situation. There's more information in there. So I'm going to get some questions here. Um, I'm sorry. The, I, I don't It looks like Arabic, maybe Chinese. I don't understand the the uh, the name here, but but you're typing in English. Sir, my knee cracking, popping sound, kneecap problem. What can I do? Please tell me. Oh, I'm so sorry. You have cracking and popping sounds in your in your kneecap. Um, that's a sign of having irregular surfaces on the cartilage. Put simply, your cartilage is injured and damaged. I don't know how severe it is or how permanent it is. Maybe it, it can heal. It's hard to tell just based off of a video like this. Um, but when there's sound coming from a joint, it means that there's more friction. There's more, the smooth surfaces inside the joint are not smooth anymore for some reason. And so now it's, it's making cracking and popping sounds whenever you go to bend. That's usually because of excessive pressure that's been added to the knee joint. I got my knee here. So here's the knee. There's a the kneecap. Right behind the kneecap, there's cartilage. And then on the end of the thigh bone, there's cartilage. If you have too much compression from muscle imbalances, from activities that you might be doing, um, then you start to rub on that cartilage inappropriately and it can wear it down and cause bumps or, or injuries to the, to the cartilage behind the kneecap or on the front of the thigh bone here. And then when you go to bend it, as you're using it for everyday activities like walking, going up and down stairs, exercise, it'll make that crunching, popping sound. Now, my question to you would be, does it hurt? You can comment on there and let me know because if it hurts, then you really need to deal with it right away. It's urgent because it's only going to get worse over time if you're continuing the same activities that got you in that same position. But if it doesn't hurt, you still need to do something about it, but it's a little less urgent. Um, I, for instance, I have cracking, popping sounds happening in my knee all the time. Um, and thankfully, I've, I've dealt with it. I had a knee injury. That's why I had a knee brace on for almost a year to deal with it. My knee is so much better and I can run and lift weights and do everything that I need to do for, for life just fine. Um, but I still get cracking, popping sounds and I'm very aware of making sure that my exercise and my movements are, are done in a way that make me use the right muscles that take pressures off my kneecap. But it's my belief that I have permanent damage inside my knee, my knee on, on the, on the cartilage, but I'm managing it. I'm not, I don't have to wear a knee brace. I, I, I just have to be careful with how much I exercise. I can still increase my exercise intensity if I like. Um, I feel it if I do too much, but I'm, I'm doing just fine. I can walk as long as I want. For, to give you exact context, if I go run three and a half miles, my knee starts to hurt. Even if I'm doing everything correctly, using my glutes, using my foot muscles, form when running is good. And the reason that I get pain at that point is just because I haven't trained myself enough currently to go beyond that. What would happen if I did train myself more is the cartilage in the back of my kneecap would densify. It would become more dense. And even though it's, it's probably damaged a bit, you can still um, create more density back there and on the end of the thigh bone. And then I could tolerate running four miles or five miles or whatever I choose to go up to within reason. I just have to let my cartilage catch up. Cartilage responds. It is a, a live tissue in your body. It does have nutrients that get to it. Some of it has a good blood supply. Some of it doesn't. But usually the, the, the part that doesn't have a, a good blood supply has an excellent supply of synovial fluid or joint fluid that will nourish it. The body is amazing. It has ways to get nourishment to the right areas. A long time ago, I can't tell you the, the decade exactly, I believe it was the 1950s, they discovered capillaries. Capillaries are the tiniest blood vessels. They're microscopic. They're so small that only one blood cell can travel through them at a time. And it's the connection between the arteries and the veins. If you look at any anatomy picture that has arteries and veins in it, and the progression of it, they, 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 go, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. They turn into arterioles on the artery side. 
venules on the vein side, and then they get smaller and they turn into capillaries where they cross each other. And those capillaries are inside our tissues, like our skin, our muscles, and they're tiny, tiny little tubes where blood passes through. And the reason why they're so tiny is because the the um, surfaces, the, the the edges of the of the tubes are so thin that they allow oxygen to pass through. Um, uh, nutrients like glucose, you know, all, all the nutrients that we need to survive, vitamins, minerals, water, all that has to go back and forth through the membranes, the, the lining of the of the tubes in order for, for um, the, the tissues to get what they need and to also get rid of the waste products that they need. Cartilage has its own way of doing that, even though we don't have a good blood supply in there. I, and, and I can't tell you that there's research on this 100%, but I've seen it in person with patients. When we move that synovial fluid inside the, the knee joints, um, one of the exercises that I, that I preach on this channel is um, tailgate swings or, or leg swings like that. The whole point of that is just to get that fluid to circulate. That fluid is made from your blood on inside the joint lining. And so when you get that fluid to circulate, you get the blood to replenish the fluid and, and put more nutrients into it. And then the, the fluid gets to the cartilage that's right there behind your kneecap. If you've got bone on bone, knee joint problems, losses of cartilage, you need to get tons of motion without very much resistance at all to get that knee fluid going, to heal your cartilage, get it to flare down and put you in a position where you can tolerate more forces over time without injuring your cartilage further. So I hope that answers your question. I'm not even going to try to pronounce your name. I have no idea what, what uh, your name is. If you can type it in English, I, I'll say your name. Um, but um, anyways, I hope that helps. Um, if there's no other questions, I'm going to get going here. Type a question real quick, uh, just to give you guys a recap of the, the knee braces for knee arthritis, for knee arthrosis, you for bone on bone knee joint situations, a knee brace is not required. It is optional and it's not going to fix the problem. It's going to give you some pain relief. The main point of wearing that knee brace is just to allow you to tolerate being on your feet a bit longer to get some more exercise in or to do what you have to do. And, uh, oh, you put your name, uh, Asanula. Hi, Asanula. Thanks so much for your questions. I hope I helped you out. Uh, and Mari Lopez, um, I'll, I'll answer yours here in a question. I'll answer your question here in a second. <clears throat> um, you the knee brace for osteoarthritis or bone on bone problems is just a piece of your, of your recovery. And really it's not going to make you recover all the way. It's more so the way I use it with our patients is a way to avoid pain medications, a, a way to delay any sort of injections for pain or having to visit the doctor. Cause if you can put on that knee brace, even though it's not technically taking the pressures off your knee joint, like, like we need to for the long term, but it'll allow you to be on your feet a bit longer to, cook and clean and do the things you need to do. Great. Do that. A knee brace is a much cheap. If, if this $50 brace saves you from taking pain medications and having any sort of reactions, then all the power to you. If, if you can avoid taking a, an, a, a cortisone injection, which over time damages your ligaments and your tendons, do the knee brace, but don't rely on it to solve your knee problem. It's just a temporary fix to get you through a tough time, you still have to go fix your muscle imbalances. You gotta strengthen your glutes. You gotta look at your foot muscles. You gotta make sure that your quads are not the dominant muscle. You're not using your quads all the time whenever you walk, go up and down steps, do exercise. If you're using your quads too much, it's going to put too much pressure on your kneecap as well as the, the shin bone. It's gonna pull your shin bone up against your thigh bone and it's gonna put more pressure on the cartilage there and further or worsen your bone on bone knee joint situation. It's going to worsen your uh, uh, your knee arthritis in the long term. And this is not going to solve the pressure problem. You need to still exercise. Um, so Lawrence, I hope that we answer your question. And uh, let me get to Mari's question. Mari Lopez. Hi, Mari. Um, had an injection of, of uh, Doralane. What brace do I need to help maintain support? Um, there's the OA brace from Don Joy. And Don Joy, Don Joy is like the higher end brand of, of knee brace. That's like the, the one that the surgeons will recommend usually. You could do that. Uh, go back and replay this video once once we finish it, Madi. Or I don't know if you could scroll right now if you're watching this live. 
Um, but you've got to find the brace that works best for you. We give our recommendation. This is very affordable. Um, the Don Joy ones tend to be more in the hundred dollar range. Um, but you're just looking for the knee for the knee brace to help you get through pain. It's not going to fix your problem. So um, you still have to look at exercises. Go check out our, our um, playlist for arthritis videos. We've got tons of exercises in there. I'll link it. I didn't put it in this video, but it, but if you're watching this later on, you'll be able to catch it. And, um, and start on those exercises. And this is a great point to mention. Our 28-day knee program um, is available. You can also find a link for that in the description. That is a series of exercises that you do over 28 days and guidance and advice from myself. And I'll take you through a process to improve your knee joint mobility, your, your tolerance for standing on it. And you can modify the exercises to your specific severity and combination of knee problems in case you have arthritis and a meniscus tear or other stuff, you can go check that out. We've got tons of reviews on that um, uh, that program and uh, we've, helped up, uh, we've helped out a ton of people. It's totally worth it. It's less than the cost of one physical therapy appointment and um, you'll be the better for it. You learn that stuff and you do it the rest of your life and your knees are gonna thank you for it so much. All right, guys, I gotta get going here. You have yourselves a wonderful day. If you're catching this on the replay, drop a question in the comment section. We'll get back to it as soon as possible. Bye-bye.